Happy Wednesday, Seattle hockey fans. It is officially the off season for us. And while that's bittersweet, everything's still pretty new. We're going to wrap up. I know yesterday I really got into some of the things I did not like about game seven, but we're going to talk about some news around the Seattle Kraken. Uh, we're going to go take you to exit interviews and we're starting with Groo, who, as far as I'm concerned, is our, um, Locked on Kraken, MVP of the playoffs. And uh, we'll talk to you about other exit interviews and so much more. It's a jam-packed first off-season show of 2022-23 right here on Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked on Kraken. I'm your host, Erica L. Ayala. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily routine, the everydayers. You know, unfortunately, our postseason is over, but that doesn't mean that the party has to end. Welcome to the off season with yours truly. Uh, you can find us, of course, everywhere you find your Locked On podcast network content, including, of course, YouTube. If you're watching, hello on YouTube. Audio platforms, including Sirius SXM. If you're looking for us on Sirius SXM, just search Kraken. That's K-R-A-K-E-N. There's no C in Kraken, just just in case just in case. Anyway, um, you can find us there and we've got a jam packed show. We've got a jam packed next couple of days really for you because each day I'm going to take you to the exit interviews of one of your members of the Seattle Kraken. And of course it's a game. day. No, it's not a Seattle Kraken game day, but some of your favorite Seattle Kraken prospects are hitting the ice tonight against the Calgary Calgary Wranglers. And we're going to talk about the AHL Calder Memorial Cup playoffs, Calder Cup playoffs coming up on the show. Uh, you know, let's, let's go to um, a really nice word of encouragement from your Seattle Kraken to the fans. Um, so many great things happening in this organization. And that includes that, that our guys love playing for us. And that really was brought home. We're not going to go over all of the exit interviews because again, we're in the off season and we're still five days a week. So we're going to, we're going to milk this, this sucker, but we're going to, um, go to a video that the Seattle Kraken put together. And I can tell you that the guys in this video, as they were speaking uh, today for their exit interviews, they're excited, man. They're so excited to play here. And um, maybe not exactly who I want uh, will be a, a Kraken lifer, but we're, we're definitely going to have some guys that, that want to end their careers here. And, and here's hoping it happens. So uh, I needed to process what I was feeling and some of my disappointment um, just in game seven in particular. But this was a, a fun ride. I've said it before and it remains true. I am so blessed. I'm so honored that I get to be the first ever host of this show. And I hope I get to stick around as long as possible. It's tough. It's hard. Last year, last season was hard. I've had difficult moments, but we stick with it together because we hold fast and we stay true. So let's go over to um, Bob Condor. He had some words that he shared. Um, and again, a lot of this, I watched uh, not all, but most of the exit interviews. But again, we'll we'll get to those and they'll be up on YouTube Um throughout the next handful of days, really a week or so. But this is uh, entitled 
uh, players, big fans of the fans. While the Kraken faithful can appreciate fun and can appreciate a fun and first ever po- NHL postseason run, players and coaches say right back at you for bringing the best playoff atmosphere. And I mean, did you see Yanni Gord's face? I mean, just like I, I loved that. Um, Thanksgiving Eve 2021 might be an unlikely place to start a story about how much the Kraken players and organization appreciate the fan support this season and especially during the extended playoff run. But when original Kraken players like Adam Larson, Jared McCann, and Philip Grubauer all rave about the home crowd during a long during a long ago inaugural season loss several months after the fact, it's worth repeating. When Larson sat down for a one-on-one end of season interview last May, he fielded an an expected question about the Seattle fan fan base with an unexpected reply. Quote, what I remember is the fans cheering us when we scored those goals in the third period, said the team's number one defenseman. Those goals were three scored after the Colorado Avalanche jumped out to a 7-0 lead by early third period. Now Kraken forward Andre Burakovsky notching two of the Avalanche goals. Yet when Eberly, when Jordan Eberly scored at the six-minute mark, Climate Pledge Arena erupted with a level of decibels now quite familiar to the auditory senses of fans who packed the place every game night. Fan favorite Brandon Tanev scored less than three minutes later to make it 7-2, with the noise meter rising as if Seattle had tied the score. Same thing when the original Kraken forward Colin Blackwell, he played for Chicago this season, notched his first goal of the year to set a 7-3 final. And it goes on and on. But I mean, again, just the love, the respect that is mutual on both sides. I mean, again, I'm getting chills recounting it for this episode because it's real. And there's real love here. As uh, you heard Eberly say, you know, we're turning this into a hockey town, turning Seattle into a hockey town or turning it back into a hockey town. And it's exciting. I've long since been in love with Seattle. I've mentioned it a time or two. If you're an everydayer, you know the story. My friends and I uh, met uh, through a youth program, and she still runs that similar youth program in Seattle. And coming to Seattle for the first time for that program, but knowing the storm we're here, knowing at the time the Seattle rain, now OL rain, uh, we're in Seattle. I mean – It was an easy place to fall in love with. It's beautiful. I also went in the summer, so there's that. But um, then the Kraken came around. And for those who don't know, I got to write as a part of the staff for the Seattle Kraken when they announced the name, the Seattle Kraken. So working with Bob Condor, and that was an amazing experience. And, you know, I had an opportunity to be a host of an NHL show for the Locked On Podcast Network. And when I was tapped, I said, you know, the the shows that were available didn't really speak to me. And I said at the time, well, when you're ready to do the Seattle show, um, that's the show I want to do. And so here we are, uh, you know, uh, and even Coachella Valley Valley Firebirds, who we're going to talk about. And I love the name Firebirds because to me, it's very similar to Phoenix. And, you know, I've talked about that on the show, but I guess this is my way of long winded way of saying, yeah, there was disappointment in game seven. And I I always told you, I told you from the beginning, I'm going to shoot straight. Uh, I'm going to tell it to you how I see it. Um, but uh, there's something special here, family. There really is. And I feel it. I'm so grateful to be a part of it. There are days where it is very, very difficult, um, even for me. And I'm not hitting the ice. I'm not in the broadcast booth for the Seattle Kraken. Not yet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not in the booth every day. Um, but there's something special here. These are good people. I tell you when I catch up with the media core on the road, they're good people. They look out for those of us who are holding fast and staying true and bringing the narrative of the Seattle crack into the masses and that you don't get everywhere. This is a grind, man. And so I'm so grateful to RJ. 
Uh, I'm so grateful uh, to Allison Lucan, who's been on the show. I mean, Everett Fitzhugh has been amazing. Everett and Dave and Lindsay and Savannah. JT Brown has been awesome. Zach, I mean, I could go on and on. And I mean, this, these are staffers. These are um, broadcasters. Um, you know, it's a really special experience. And I know I've forgotten some people, but those are the ones that really stand out to me or the ones that I interact with the most. And uh, we're going to give plenty of stick taps. But as promised, this is going to be an episode. This will be the start of the next handful of days. So every day I hit the airwaves and I'm coming to you uh, as part of your daily routine. We are going to talk exit interviews until there are no more exit interviews to talk about. We've still got the Stanley Cup playoffs going on. We're not even to the final yet, so we have time. And we're going to really lock in, if you will, on individual players. And today, we're focused on Philip Grubauer. So, um, I hope you're excited. Coming up next, we're going to hear from Philip Grubauer and go over some of his big stats and really the improvements that he made year over year. And we will close out today's episode getting you ready for game day. That's right. The, the Coachella Valley Firebirds hit the ice against the Calgary Wranglers in the Calder uh, in the Calder Cup playoffs. So that's coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. Today's Wednesday episode of Locked on Kraken is brought to you by eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts or accessories, head to eBay Motors. With the eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride! eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hey, Seattle hockey fans. Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Crack in a part of your daily routine. It is officially the off season. I started a little bit later, one, because we had the exit interviews, but also because, you know, I'm a... Uh... I'm relaxing. My off season is technically like two days. So uh, today and tomorrow, because then the WNBA season comes along. So you best believe right here on Locked on Kraken, I'm going to be keeping you up to date about what's happening with the Seattle Storm. Speaking of the Seattle Storm, I know Stewie does not no longer plays for the Storm. She plays for the Liberty. That's that's my WNBA team. Since the Houston comments don't exist anymore, the Liberty, that's my team. Anyway, I got to ask Stewie about the Seattle Kraken building, building hockey, building NHL hockey in Seattle. And she was so complimentary of the Seattle Kraken. She said she's keeping an eye and had been watching the run. Um, this was during the second round that I got to talk to her when I was back in New York. And um, I mean, that's the impact that we're having. I don't think outside of me, the WNBA and NHL crossover is probably not prominent and strong, but in a place like Seattle, Climate Pledge Arena, where the Seattle Storm got to make just a fantastic run in the playoffs, and oh my goodness, that series against the Las Vegas Aces, who eventually won the championship in Climate Pledge Arena, watching Sue Bird's final season on the Twins? Are you kidding me? That's magical. And Sue Bird and Megan Rapino going to Seattle Kraken games. Again, I talked about it in the open or in the first segment. There's magic happening in Seattle. And my only regret is that I'm not in Seattle often enough to, uh, to experience it firsthand. But 
All the more reason then, if you're not already, if you're getting value from Locked on Kraken, make sure you're subscribed, uh, particularly on YouTube. Join us for our watch parties because that's how we get to monetize things. And the more we monetize, the more I can catch up with the boys on the road or even in Seattle. But speaking up again. Speaking of catching up with the boys, let's catch up with Philip Grubauer. I want you to hear a little bit. We'll hear the first half of his media availability, and then we'll go over some of his stats and then take you to what I thought was a, a fun exchange at the end. Philip Grubauer, if you look at even his exit interviews, his interviews overall throughout the season, it's night and day. And Philip Grubauer is feeling more connected to this team. And that's what he says in his exit interviews. We've been talking about it for several weeks now, several months now here on Locked on Kraken, but it was nice to hear Philip Grubauer be able to articulate it and reflect a little bit on season two. Here's Philip Grubauer. Incredible to see everything come together. Um, starting in training camp, um, that was the first day um, as a group, starting to see the city, I mean, before we played a game last year, um, CD was unbelievable, but in the playoffs, uh, took it to a whole nother level. So I think we laid the foundation and we set the standards and, uh, for, for the future and what's, what's going to happen here. And it's been, uh, yeah, an in incredible ride for this group. How much does it help confidence wise for you that you put together two awesome performances in game sevens and back to back series and the run that you had in the second half of this year and, and everything to kind of get back to where you want to be? Uh, yeah, I, I think I settled in there um, after the break or like after Christmas a little bit. It's easier to get into a game flow once you play like every other day. If you play once a week, where um, it's it's hard to get into that rhythm for sure. Obviously, you have to earn it and you have to. Um, it's it's not given um, those those uh, chances. So um, yeah, you you could say. Too successful, but I, I would say only one successful because we lost the, the other game seven. So um, there's still like improvement and work to do. But um, in terms of how this group uh, played throughout two uh, playoff series, it's been uh, pretty amazing. Phil, as your game continued to elevate throughout the season after you came back from injury, what part did Steve Rear play in your evolution this season, or maybe you and Jonesy as well? Um, yeah, I mean, Jonesy has been incredible. Um, I, I was hurt for the first half, and he stepped up, and he had an amazing run. So um, you need two two goalies, and um, yeah. Um, for now, I think it's just like a matter of working in the summer, and uh, that same philosophy and the same mentality we had into the playoffs in the last uh, part of the regular season, and take it into next year, and uh, and yeah, start where we left off this year. Was Steve a part of? that too as well or is he just more supporting what you were working on in your game? No, Stevie, uh, I mean, he, you work with him every day, you watch with you every day and uh, small details uh, can make a huge difference. It's a game game of inches and uh, he's been incredible all year for us and um, one reason too why we um, gotten back to playing the way we can play and yeah, he's a huge ad addition to the team. So we're going to hear a little bit more from Philip Grubauer later, but um, I want to take you to NHL.com and a snapshot of Philip Grubauer, particularly in, obviously, in the last two seasons. So here's uh, some of his stats. If you are on audio, don't worry. I'll, I will uh, narrate this for you, but we're at the Philip Grubauer tab on NHL.com. Uh, so 31 years old, 6'1". Plays for the Seattle Kraken, but you knew all that already. Probably most of it. Anyway, I want to take you to this breakdown. And then actually something that I found surprising as I was looking at Philip Grubauer's numbers. But in the playoffs for 2022-23, so that's this year, he played 14 games. Um, he didn't play every minute of all 14 of uh, the 14 games, but he had seven wins and seven losses straight split down the middle. Um, so goals against average 299 save percentage 903 in the playoffs played 823 minutes for us. Now you can see that um, just a hair under his career playoffs uh, save percentage career. He is, um, 
nine nine ten save percentage. Obviously, he has more career playoff minutes at two thousand seven hundred twenty two. His career playoffs uh, goals against average is two six five. So again, um, kind of in the ballpark. He was at a two nine nine for this year, and um, over the twenty two twenty three season. Philip Grubauer played 39 games. 36 of those were a start. He was above 500 at 17, 14, and 4. His uh, goals against average was a 285. His save percentage, an 895. Um, and his career save percentage, a 912. So, um, but what I found interesting is if you scroll down here and we look at his last two years, his um, his numbers, you know, obviously he played a lot more games last year. He played 55 games, 54 starts uh, last year for Seattle. This year, 39 games played, 36 starts. Just mentioned that. Last year, he had an 889 um, uh, save percentage, excuse me. And this year, he had an 8 nine five so that's an improvement um you know he uh tallied over two thousand minutes both seasons tallied over three thousand last year so philip grubauer definitely made some improvements and you know i tried not to be critical of philip grubauer too much last year because i thought that there was a lot going on but i did say that he didn't always feel comfortable or even sometimes dare i even say confident in net with the seattle kraken but oh baby how the times have changed it was great to see him in net for us this season on the back end in particular and for sure in the playoffs again He's my MVP for the Seattle Kraken in the playoffs this year, um, Philip Grubauer. So glad to have him back. I will note that Martin Jones, at least today, did not speak to media. We talked about this, and we will talk about it more in the offseason, but Martin Jones is on a one-year contract, and so we will see what that potentially means for Philip Grubauer um, and who his goalie partner is, including what does that mean for Chris Drieger? And we have some news about Chris Drieger, and we're going to talk about the Coachella Valley Firebirds. That's coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. But first, uh, let's take you to just this little fun nugget from Philip Grubauer, and then I will uh, get you ready for segment number three. Uh, that would be a that would be a good question for him. <laughs> He's just presenting it to me and uh, just talking up. No, but yes, it's it's uh, looking at goals, looking at situations, uh, uh, angles, obviously, and then uh, yeah, um, um, then it's a matter of uh, getting on the ice and actually working on that stuff. It's it's one thing to um, look and and watch like video, but on an, like. You still have to get out and and feel comfortable on the ice with like doing it. Um, obviously, it's a little bit tricky if there's not any shooters around and not too many guys shooting at you to feel that kind of comfortable uh, level. But uh, yeah, it's it's video. What is it about a heavy workload that you think brings out the best in you? You just get in the flow. Um, you just work. You compete and you work and you enjoy the grind. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. So that was Philip Grubauer talking. He had just before that question uh, talked about goaltending coach. We talked about that a lot in the preseason. Um, uh, Briere and talking about what are the things that, that, you know, you're going to work on and Philip in his Philip way. It's a Philip Grubauerism, if you will. He's like, that's a good question for Steve, <laughs> but he would say those things in the, in season one and be deadpan. Uh, whereas you could see um, he enjoyed a laugh along with the media in attendance. I'm pretty sure that was Darren Brown from uh, sound of hockey asking that question. So shout out to Darren as well. Um, Anyway, coming up next, we're going to get into um, what's up with Chris Drieger and what to expect on tonight's game day for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. But first, 
This episode of Locked on Kraken is brought to you by a new sponsor, and that is Bird Dogs. Uh, Bird Dogs is a company um, definitely geared towards men, and it's uh, like a shorts and pants company, have these really great liners. Now, listen, I... Um, can't speak for the male experience in this category, but I can tell you as an athletic woman and someone who oftentimes finds it difficult to find pants and shorts that fit my body type, I, I know the importance of a good fit. And um, I do have some bird dogs and knowing nothing about how men's pants fit I was able to get a pair and they fit pretty nice. These are these are things that I'm going to be walking around in Tulsa, uh, you know, running errands in my new bird dogs. They have a great stretchy fabric that makes anyone's legs look absolutely fabulous. But um, also, you know, uh, you want something that's comfortable, that's cool, that's versatile. And so far from what I know, that has been bird dogs. I also really like and you can get on on this action as well. Um, that you'll get a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with your order. And uh, so you're going to want to go check them out. Uh, again, definitely geared t- more towards the male body. And I would, I would also say probably male humor. But I can tell you that as someone who often can't find a good fit, these did fit pretty well. So uh, go to birddogs.com backslash locked on NHL. And when you enter promo code locked on NHL, that's how you will get that free tumbler. And I will definitely be using that, uh, you know, to keep my drinks cool while I'm uh, getting a tan this summer wearing my new bird dogs shorts. As always, I want to thank you for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily routine. We're kind of doing the thank yous. Uh, it's our first day of the off season, uh, technically second day. I just really went in on game seven yesterday on yesterday's episode. Uh, so yeah, I, I've been saying it's our first, but it's our second. And um, I'm just grateful. I really am grateful. I still have this rally towel uh, that I after the last home game against Vegas of all people (laughs) Vegas Um, but anyway we're having a good time that being said there is still hockey to be played and some of your favorites are headed to Coachella Valley that's right Ty Cartier Jesper Froden and yes Chris Drieger are all headed to Coachella Valley ahead of game four Ty Cartier, as you know, was named the AHL Most Outstanding Rookie. Uh, He collected 57 points, 28 goals, 29 assists for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. He also scored uh, in his first postseason game alongside the Seattle Kraken. Um, He made his debut against the Avalanche in round one. Uh, That's where he scored 10 postseason games, recorded three goals and two assists. Ty Cartier, Jesper Froden, Firebird's leading goal scorer until called up to Seattle on February 23rd. He racked up 47 points for Coachella Valley, 25 goals, 27 assists. He was named the AHL Player of the Month in October. And um, the Swedish, the Stockholm, Sweden native uh, will... um, Returned to the Seattle, or excuse me, to the Coachella Valley Firebirds after playing 14 regular season games for the Kraken, include and excuse me, one playoff game. And then there's Chris Drieger. Chris Drieger came back to the Seattle Kraken as an emergency recall um, while he was in the middle of rehabbing. We haven't had Chris Drieger all season with the Seattle Kraken, but with the Firebirds, he made 14 appearances and went 9-4-0 and in the regular season and had a goals against average of 2-6-1, a save percentage of 9 8 Tonight, the Firebirds have a chance to close out the best of five series against the Calgary Wranglers. We talked about that one yesterday. Riker Evans in triple OT, getting it done. Coachella Valley gave up two goals early, but then got one in the second, one in the third to head to overtime. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was Max McCormick. We talked a lot about Max McCormick last year, and again, he's crushing it for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. That's happening tonight 
Wednesday, May 17th. Uh, that's going to um, be an amazing opportunity to continue to see some of our guys. That's um, 7 p.m. local time. Uh, it's going to be at Acrisure Arena. So that's Pacific uh, Standard Time for those who are not in either California or Seattle. Um, it's going to be a good one. And you best believe on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Kraken, we will update you on those scores. But we're going to close it out for now. Listen, it's the off season. I uh, I was stayed sober throughout the playoffs just because I wanted to not for any particular reason other than because I wanted to but I think today I'm gonna go get some tacos and uh, margarita in just a celebration of truly being grateful to be a part of uh of this amazing community I've like I, I've been getting emotional on today's episode, but I'm so grateful for you. Be kind to yourself and to each other. And we're still going to hold fast. We're still going to stay true. And uh, we're going to fire it up for Coachella Valley on their game day. Let's close out this series and advance on. I will catch you on the next episode of Locked on Kraken. Until then, peace.